Today, I want to take you through the process of updating the 1.74 version of Survival Game Kit to the new 1.8. 1 1.8 uh, 1 is a new series that kind of focuses on, focuses on improvements to networking performance and things like that. So this is a good update to do if you are still on the 1.74 version. Uh, also, make sure that for this video that you're keeping in mind that this is just for the Survival Game Kit. Uh, I'm not doing the version in this video for the merged version of ALS, so Advanced Local Motion System and Survival Game Kit. I will have a separate video for that because it was just getting too confusing going back and forth and having to explain, okay, if you're doing just Survival Game Kit, do this. If you have the merged version, do this. So I'm going to have a, a separate tutorial series where I go through each of the updates, and this one is just for Survival Game Kit. Or if you want an idea of, how to update survival game kit on your uh, installation, whatever it happened to be, you know, happens to be merged with. So if you're interested in following along, make sure you go to diffusestudios.com. So diffusestudios.com, and in there you'll see the patch notes. You can go to the 1.8 version, and you'll see the list that I will be following here. And so if you want to do that, uh, go ahead and pull it up and you can do it side by side, but I'll be taking through each of these steps to be able to get this to match. So let's go ahead and to start, uh, you should be in the main screen with Survival Game Kit loaded. It should say 1.74 here. If it does not say 1.74, make sure that you take a look and are using the appropriate video. If this says 1.8, then you need to be doing the updates from 1.8 to you know 1.8.1, for example and not be doing this 1.8 patch on something that's already there or past this version. So it goes from 1.74 to 1.8 uh, and then on, on from there in the 1.8 series. So make sure you're on the correct version that you want to update. And to begin with, uh, we need to fix an issue where the save system is not loading duplicate grids for new, new clients. So to begin with, we need to, on the main screen here, you see the left, uh, I'm going to select survival game kit and I'm going to do a search in here for inventory save system. Go ahead and open up that blueprint. And then in here, uh, let's zoom out and you'll see where it says load grid save. Well, there's a branch here. Uh, and what I want to do is actually drag off of the true and do switch has authority. And that's a macro. And I just want to put that in between that and the load grids. Uh, and what that will do is make it so that it makes sure that it's has, it's supposed to load this, that it's local and then it will connect it. So just add that, uh, it's under start auto save timer. So inventory save system event graph on the left here, search for start auto save timer. And then add it between this branch and the load grids brand, uh, blueprint. So let's go ahead. And from there, let's move on to the next one. There was an issue with the full auto shooting, not updating the location. And so what we need to do here is Go ahead and compile and save this inventory save uh, system. And then we need to open the master character. So under showcase, let's search for master character. Open that up. And we need to create a new variable on the left here. So under variables, let's type screen center. He spells it C-E-N-T-R-E. That's fine. Uh, and then on the upper right, change the variable type to a vector. You want it to be reliable. Uh, and so let's go and compile this really quick. Actually, uh, sorry, not this part reliable. Uh, the next thing we're going to be creating an event as well in here, and that will be setting to reliable. So to begin with, what we need to do is get to the main event graph. So go ahead and click event graph up here. If you're not in the right area, double click it on the left. And then you'll see server look at rotation below that. We want to add a new event. So do custom event. We'll do add custom event. 
called a server set screen center. And what I want to do is go ahead and drag out here that screen center on the left. Hit set. Let's connect this up. And then I'm going to drag the where the input that it's wanting for screen center. I'm going to drag it over and see where it says add pin to node. See, so automatically adds that for me. Uh, he just calls this center. I want this to kind of match any feature screenshots he does. So call that center there. Uh, what we want this to do is we want to have it to execute on the server. So click run on server. You'll see that changes this to execute on server. And then we, this is where we want to make it reliable. We'll compile and save that. And now inside of the master character, we want to go to set all character rotations. So do it on the left here under my blueprint, search for set all character, you see rotations. Double click that. You'll see a sequence. So it's doing each of these first, it's doing this first one, going to the next one. We want to add a three to that. And then we want to call that server set screen center. That's that new event we just created. From center here, I want to do a get world location. Now, there's a lot of things that this could be. So rather than selecting one of these, we got to figure out how are we going to determine what item we're going to get the world location of. Well, to begin with, let's instead go from left to right. Uh, I want to get each of the cameras because that's what we're going to be determining for screen center. So we have our third person camera. Drag that out. And so I'm on the left-hand side. I'm just scrolling down. So I get to the TP camera. You have FP camera. Go ahead and drag that out. And then you have ADS camera. Those are the three cameras that we're using. Now, how are we going to determine which ones of these are going to be used for the screen center? To do that, we need to do a select. So I'm going to drag this ADS camera off to the side because we're going to do the first and third person camera first. And then we do a get player inventory component and select that from there we're going to drag off and we're going to get camera view this is what's going to determine if you're in the first or third person camera which one you're actually using so we need to select from this and a first person camera and third person camera that's so going to query that which one are you looking at and then it will decide based on the correct one. Now we've got our ADS camera uh, and we need to determine, okay, if we're not using either one of these, maybe we're using the ADS camera. So once again, let's get this player inventory component. You could select on the left, control C and control V that down here, drag off of that and do get ADS. We want to get a true false. Is it, are you aiming down the sites or are you not aiming down the sites? From this, we want to do a select. So here's where it's going to determine if you're aiming down the sights or not. If you are, well, then we want it to use the ADS camera to determine screen center. If you're not, then figure out if you're using the first or the third person camera and use it from there. So it's going to drag off this return value. Now we can do a get world location and it's going to use this object to determine that. Uh, you can drag that to center. Let's compile and then save that. Now let's go and we want to make it so that this value uh, that we've set is being used for the screen trace. So we need to first go to the showcase and let's do a search for the master range weapon because we want to change uh, what it's doing for the screen trace. If you aren't in the screen trace on the left hand side, search for screen trace, double click that, it should take you to this page. Where we're wanting to be is right before the add spread to the trace after the first section there, there's camera center, which is a variable that's set. Well, we want to pull that new value that we just found. So let's do a get player inventory component. From there, we want to get the master character. And there we want to get green center. So this is the one that's being set based on the camera. And we'll replace this, uh, this call to this camera center Go and compile and save that. And then for the final part of this section, uh, we want to do a quick check in the master character here. 
So you see where it's doing the then three. Well, we want to make sure that you're actually holding an item to determine this. So uh, because you, if you're not holding an item, you, screen center won't matter. It's not firing or using any of the ranged weapon. Let's go ahead and right click and do get held actor. And we just want to make sure this is valid because if you're holding something, this will come back as valid. So is valid. Do the one with the question mark. And then if it is valid, I'm going to have it go down there. And then I want to drag then three to the beginning of that. So I was just going to check, make sure this is valid and then continue on. So it's not doing it needlessly when you're not actually holding an item. Okay. So next, what we want to do is fix an issue with shift click clicking while moving items to convert components. So to do this, we're going to need to be in the inventory HUD. So from the showcase, let's search for inventory HUD. Open that up. And we're going to need to disconnect something. So first of all, we need to go to the graph on the upper right. That takes you to the blueprints. And then the upper left under search, let's search for set end inventory slot. And here where there is the item inventory, uh, we need to find that. And if you look, I'm going to zoom out this section right here, zoom in a bit, you'll see, is it the item inventory? We're going to actually bypass this because we don't want to do this branch check. Uh, so from the cast, I'm going to drag that up, that redirect node that's up top. And this will never be called. So now it is pretty much bypassing it. So if the cast was successful, it goes up to true. If it fails, it goes down to false and it doesn't actually check anything with the, with the item. So go ahead and we can move on from there. Uh, next, we're going to fix an issue where ignore actor was being checked and run too often. Uh, to be in this, we need to be in the player inventory build, or actually player building component. So from showcase, let's search for player building component. Open that up. And then we need to be in the building trace. So on the upper left, let's search for building trace. Double click that. It should take you and what we want to do is be right at the beginning here. Uh, and we'll just move this up because we don't want to do this anymore. We're going to drag right past it. You can disconnect that link if it makes you more comfortable. So now building trace is going to connect directly to the line trace by channel. Go ahead and save that. Uh, and then there's one thing for this that we still need to do. Uh, so first of all, we want to go to the player building component still. Uh, but we need to be in the begin play. So on the upper left here, let's search for begin play. And we're actually going to need to be in begin play and client conditions. So you can double click to get both of those open. You should see both tabs here. What we want to do is take this section here that's down below where it says set ignore actors timer. We want to highlight the comment and that box, right click and hit cut. Then we want to connect the pins so that it continues on. We don't want that to break. Then go to client conditions and let's paste that at the very end. We want to add that between this branch and the outputs. So that's going to run it at a different time. You can go ahead and compile and save that. And now there's one more fix for this section. After this, it's going to be improvements. But there were, it's a fix for unequipped bags to base inventory slots. So we need to be in the player inventory component. So in the showcase, let's search for player inventory component. Open that up. And then we need to be in the event graph. Should look something like this. On the upper right, that's where begin play is. And we want to add a variable and set it here. So what I'm going to do is make a little bit of room. 
because there's some extra things. Then move, begin play over a little bit and we can tidy it up afterwards. So first of all, let's get inventory slots. So that's a variable that already exists. Now I want to drag off of that. I want to be, do promote to variable. And then we want to set it here. So you can move that. Now the name, we want to be base inventory slots. You can see base inventory slots. And it should, because we dragged it off of here, it will be an integer already. So it'll set it as the correct type. And then I can connect that together. Okay, so now that's created. Uh, so when it does begin play in the player inventory component, it's going to set this variable. But now we need to go into the inventory HUD. You might already have it open. I'm going to compile and save this to make sure it's all current. If not, just go to the showcase, search for inventory HUD. And then make sure you're in the graph in the upper right. The section that we want to go to is set end inventory slot. I already have it here searched, but let's go ahead and clear that and do set end inventory slot. It will take you to a section like this. And what you want to find is, is the slot not a backpack slot? That's what we're wanting to find. It's kind of difficult to find it in this whole mess. What we could do is just a search for, is the slot not and there's a comment there. That'll take you right to the section. There's a slot, not a backpack slot. It's down at the lower right. So there's the player inventory component. And right now it's getting a class and getting the default class. But we don't want to do all that. I'm going to drag and move the get class and the get to class defaults. And off of this, I'm going to drag get base inventory slots. That's the one I just created. I'm going to connect that to the top of this subtract. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can right click object to the left of get class and you can break that link. You can see now it's pulling that base inventory slots variable and you shouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So, all right, C compile and save that completes the fixes. And now there's some improvements. Uh, one thing, if you get an error here, it's probably because we didn't compile. So what we need to do is go back to the base inventory slots here, your player inventory component. You already didn't compile here, hit compile. And then we'll save that. And then we'll go back to the inventory HUD. And then that should remove that error. It's just because we went through, we continued on without compiling this and it doesn't realize uh, that that's all correct and created. Now we can compile and no error. So the next thing is actually just moving something. It's not that it's broken, but there's just a better place for it to be. And that's the death animations uh, variable. So we'll need to go into the player inventory component. And to find this, you could search for, I already have it open, but player inventory component, open that up. And what we want to do is create a new variable in here because the variable is actually created in a different set of blueprints and we want it to be in here. So hit plus variable and let's call this death animations. For the type, we want it to be anim sequence. And then you want to change it with the little icon on the right to array because we want to have a list of animation sequences. Uh, you can make it instance editable. It's compiling it so I have the ability to add to this. So instance editable, and then click plus three times for the animations. On the drop down, just search for death. You'll see death one, death two. And death three. I want to compile and save that. Now we'll need to go into the third person anim BP because that's where this 
other version of the variable exists. And we don't want it stored in there. So on the showcase, let's search for third person. And this should open it up just to something like the event graph. We'll go to the event graph so you can see where to go from here. And what we want to do is, first of all, go into the, uh, the place where it's play death animation. And find this, you can go to the left-hand side, do play death animation, double-click that, and you'll see here's the section right here. And it's just pulling a local variable that happens to have those same three. But we don't want it using this local one. So let's do a get character. From there, we want to get the player inventory component, which is where we created that new variable. And then from here, we want to get death animations. And then I'm going to control click and drag from the local, the variable that's in this set of blueprints to the new one. Then you can delete that and compile and save. Uh, what you could do, let's just, on the left here, you see death animations. I'm just going to see. It's not referenced anywhere, so you could delete that. So compile and save. There should be no errors. And you should be good. Uh, now there's some improvements to the networking for the player inventory component. This one's a little bit more involved. Uh, but to begin with, let's go ahead and do a save all really quickly. And then we need to open up the player inventory component. If you're not there, just search for player inventory component. Double click that. Uh, and then on the left hand side, we're going to do some filtering. So under search, let's search for hunger. And on the hunger variable, I want to change this to replicated. And then I want to put it owner only. So we have hunger, replicated, owner only. I want to do the same thing. Uh, for thirst. So in the upper left here, uh, under search, let's type in thirst. Same thing, replicated, owner only, and then we will do stamina. Stamina will be replicated and owner only. Now you can compile and save that. Okay. Uh, then another thing we will need to search for is health, but we're not going to do exactly the same. We're not going to do the condition because we want other people to know your health as well. So search for health, select it, and just choose replicated. And I'm going to compile that. Now we need to go and find all the places that some of these things are referenced because there's places they're being set that, uh, we don't need to have them set now that they're using replication to determine. So in this player inventory component, we need to search under find results for client update hunger. We'll start there. And it'll bring up a list. First of all, there's a place, the place that's being called. Uh, now let's find what all is calling this. Uh, this first one, we don't, the one for max, we don't need to do that, but there's client update hunger here. So on this list, we're just going to jump to each of the events. I'm going to select and drag those up and bypass them. And let's go ahead and just for clarity, remove that connecting pin after. So client update hunger is no longer there. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. Just for each one of those, we will break those links. Because we do not need to call these anymore. There should only be two more. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to compile that one and then we will move on to client update thirst. Type thirst here instead. It'll bring up a very similar list. We can ignore the first one because that's what's being called. But we'll go through each of these and just disconnect them. Now this one, since it's in the middle, we'll have to do what we did before and bypass them. Okay, we'll compile that. And then we'll do now stamina. So just in the bottom here where it says find result, uh, remove thirst, and type stamina. First, the first one, that's what's being called. But we can go on to the next ones. Uh, you don't just want to disconnect this because you want to go to that return node, uh, make sure that actually continues correctly. So we'll do what we did before, just move it up and drag past it. And you can disconnect that. And do something similar uh, here because it's at the very end, you can just break it. This one, since it's here, uh, now you have here, it's checking stamina. So you want that to still work, but you want to bypass this. So what we'll do is just bypass this, break that stamina link, break the connecting pin. There you go. It's still doing a check. And then this final one, same thing. I wanted to do this check for stamina there, but we're going to bypass this, break that link and the connecting pin. Now we can compile that. And this should complete uh, this section of it. Uh, you could delete the calls to it, but I don't know that that's really going to help you that much. Uh, it would just delete all of these. Uh, pretty much I just disconnected them. So it's, they should never be called at that point. So next, what we're going to do is create a custom event. Uh, and to do that, we need to be in this player inventory component and we want to be in the event graph. So. Clear the search on the upper left, go to graphs, event graph. We want to do client update all slots. Uh, so to do this, let's go ahead and create a little bit of a new section here below. I'm going to do custom event. Call this client update all slots. And then what we want to do is actually have this be an execute on owning client. So under the replicates, do run on owning client. And then from here, we want to set inventory. So you see that array where it says set inventory. And then the inventory input, we we'll actually drag that to the center here where it says add pin to node. And see it, it automatically adds that for us and then choose reliable. From here, we want to do a for each loop and connect those pins up. And then we want to call the update inventory slot. And what we're wanting to use is that array element to the item. Let's compile. And then we'll save it. 
Okay, so now uh, we want to go through and make a change where it's actually updating all these slots. So on the upper left, let's search for update all slots. You see they're networking. At the very beginning, it's doing a loop. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to call that new event that we just created. So go ahead and click for each loop or select that. You can highlight it and drag those up. And then what I want to do is client update all slots. I call that and have that go down to this reroute pin here. I'm going to disconnect the completed there because we don't want to have that coming through. Inventory will connect up. I'm going to dis disconnect the things going up to this. So those are all, all by themselves. We have inventory coming in here. And so it'll do an update slots every time you update all slots. Go ahead and compile that. Uh, and now we want to make a change to recharging stamina. So if we go in, we're still in the player inventory component, uh, but we want to go in the search in the upper left and search for recharge stamina. Open that up. Now we don't have the client update stamina. We disconnected that, but in the middle here, check if stamina is 100%. We want to switch this up a little bit. We want to put another branch here after false. And then a little bit of room here. Make it so that it's not quite so cramped. Okay. And here I'm going to use the stamina and max stamina. So I'm going to control, I'm going to select one and then control click and then control C, control V just to copy and paste those. So now we have our stamina, max stamina. I want to see if they're the same. So equals equals. We're going to equal float. And so if those are the same, that means your stamina is full. And then we'll check that condition against this. I don't want this dragging over past it. So I'm going to copy that max stamina and just drag it into the set stamina there. So it should like the, look like this in the end. Go and compile and save that. And now we need to do a little bit of a change in the player inventory component and how it replicates under the master character. So we're going to go into the master character. You might need to search here. If you go to showcase, search for master character. In the left-hand side, you see player inventory component. We're just going to do search for replicate. You should have a checkbox there. Make sure that component replicates. Pile and save that. I'll just do the exact same thing. Uh, so this is the master character. We want to go to the survival character as well. So let's go ahead and search for survival. Open that up. I think this one should already be checked, but let's go to player inventory component, search for replicate, and that should be checked as well. Now, uh, now another fix that we have is to improve the networking of the master character. And so to do this, we want to be in the master character. Uh, so go to showcase and do a search there. And in here, we want to be at the event tick. So what you could do on the left-hand side is do event tick. Double click that. You can see here where it has event tick and that set all character rotations. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't exactly work. Because if a parent uh, has a child that has an event tick, it will be overridden. Uh, and then it won't actually be called. So it will call the event tick on the child. So whatever this is the parent of. Uh, and this one will never be called. And we, want, we don't necessarily want that to happen. What we're going to do is a custom event. We're going to call this timer. And then... We're going to move this event tick up here, just out of the way. And then we'll connect timer here. You can disconnect that uh, because you don't want it to sometimes be called, depending on the situation. We're going to have it go through this other method. You may have it go twice if you ever, for some reason, remove the event tick from the child. So we don't want to do that. 
Uh, now we want to go through and we need to also change the event begin play. So on the left hand, left hand side here, so search for event begin play. And you'll see where we want to actually create an event. So first of all, you have begin play. We're going to move that to the right. Uh, and then what we want to do is to drag off of begin play and search for set timer by event. And then from event, drag off of that to the left. I want to create an event. And that's based off of timer. So we have object self. Let's compile this really quick. Okay, so now we should have on here timer, and you'll see it in the list. Click timer, select looping, and for the time, put 0 0.06. And then let's hit compile. All right, so uh, once the, what this is called, it's going to loop, it's going to call it, um, and then we should be good. So it will actually then do that tick pretty much and run that after the initial begin play. So this is one way of, of having it call regardless of whatever your child's doing. All right, now we need to be in the event graph again. So we should be there. So master character event graph. Uh, but let's go to the event tick. which we have disconnected here, uh, the master character. And what we want to do is add some things to this. So uh, we have our event tick. Let's do switch as authority. From here, we want to do from authority to a branch. And we're going to check is locally controlled. If that is true, then we want to set look at rotation. If it's remote, we want to do an is valid check. And what we're checking if it's valid is we want to get the controller. We make sure there is a valid controller for this. And from is valid, we want that to run up also to this set. Uh, the lookout rotation is going to be the get control rotation. So it should look something like this. Go ahead and compile. And then save. Now on the left-hand side here, instead of event tick, we're going to do face movement direction. Uh, but this needs to be in the survival character, not the master character. You may already have that open. If not, go to showcase and search for it. And let's do a search for face movement direction. Go ahead and zoom out a bit. And we're going to be disconnecting some of these things. So we have our rotate character here. And I'm going to Pull this up and then disconnect it. And then from the set, I'm going to drag that into the reset. Break this one off the end. Same thing here. I'm just going to disconnect this for the server rotate character set. So it ends up looking like this. You don't need to change any of this over here. We're just pretty much getting rid of these two uh, character sets. Now we need to go to the third person anim. Uh, you may have that open. If not, go to showcase and search for it. And then we need to go to the set 
the search on the left, uh, set character variables. Uh, and then there's a place where it is setting the base pitch and all that. Uh, that should be right here towards the bottom. So where these pitch and the, well, the two pitches are being set here, we need to add some things in between. So I'm going to highlight these ones to the right, move them over a bit. Uh, we'll shrink them back up here once, once that's done. And then I am going to move these two sets farther to the right. Should be good. Now the true, that can remain going there. Uh, false comes down to this other pitch. That's fine. But we need to change how we determine what this pitch is. And so to do that, let's go ahead and get pitch. And we want to do an F interp2. I'm going to move this up higher so you can see it a little bit. Uh, and then where it says delta time, I want to do a get world delta seconds. And then for the interp speed, we want that to be uh, 30. So we're going to copy this because we want two copies of this. So make one more copy, paste it below. And this is going to feed each of those pitches. Go ahead and make some room here. I'm going to drag this down. And same thing here. Okay, so we have this. Uh, what's coming into the target is actually what was connecting to pitch before. Connect that to target. So you have that connecting. And then that return value goes into pitch. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. Bring this over. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to do pretty much the same thing here. Uh, this value goes to target. The return value goes to pitch. I'm going to move this over and just put it pretty much below. Move it about the same place for the set. And then we can bring this over a little bit closer. There we go. So it should end up looking like this. Go ahead and compile and save that. And we want to do something very similar at the very end. You can see here where it's setting the yaw. So what we'll do is move one of those out to the right. Uh, and then we'll move the other yaw down farther. Double click and give ourselves some room to reroute that. Okay, so we have our base yaw minus 360. That's correct. But we want to do the same thing. F interp 2. I'm going to put that under target. So FM Terp 2 target. We want to get yaw. And that's going to be going into current. And then for the delta time, we want that also to be get world delta seconds. And then the interp speed will be 30. And then drag that up into yaw. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. So we can move these over as well. Okay. Uh, we're going to do something very similar. Uh, if you would like, you could copy some of this. We'll just copy the F interp 2, the yaw, and the get world delta seconds. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to connect this return value to the target. Connect the return value to the yaw. The interp speed should still be 30. And that should, uh, that should take care of it. So you've got this feeding in. These values are correct. And it should be setting the yaw. And now for the last uh, patch in this, let's go ahead and compile and save.
we want there's some changes improvements to the networking of the range weapon so we will want to be in the player inventory component i'm gonna hit save all and then i'm gonna close all these other tabs just so for this last one we have a fresh set and we'll open them up one more time so under the search let's search for player inventory component open that up we need to create a new event in here uh, we want to do it under the event graph and we can do it to the right of the event we created earlier custom event and we're going to call this for the name client update weapon inventory slot and you want to set this to run on owning client and tick reliable And hit compile. Now what we want to do is we want to, there's going to be a, a variable uh, that's in the input. But to get this, uh, first of all, we can do is get the weapon inventory. Then what we want to do is set array element and connect this up and you can drag these down how you want them and then from index i want to break weapon inventory and then i want to drag from the weapon inventory over and add that pin to the node so you can see there i could rename that to weapon inventory it'll automatically create the correct type it is going to the index uh, and then the item will be the same thing. And now we need to replace some of the nodes. So, because we just did client update weapon inventory slot, we created that. Uh, so we need to go to, on the master range weapon. So under showcase, let's search for master range weapon. Oops, weapon. Open that up. And then the left-hand side under my blueprint, search for set weapon inventory. And at the very end, you have client update weapon inventory. We want to change that. So player inventory component is correct. But we want to, let's just, we can move these down below. And disconnect that pin. And we can disconnect this pin. And from here, I'm going to drag off the player inventory component and do client update weapon inventory slot. That's the one we just created. Go ahead and connect that up. Move this over so we have a little more room. And then the struct out, that'll go to the weapon inventory. And it should look like this. You can go ahead and drink that comment box if you'd like. Compile and save. And then one final thing. Is we want to be in the left hand side and search for deduce condition. And there's a section called Update Client Weapon Inventory. So you may need to zoom in a little bit, but it should be right towards the center here. And we need to change this. We have our player inventory component, uh, and it's calling that Client Update Weapon Inventory, but we wanted to instead call that Client Update Weapon Inventory Slot. And let's go and control click and drag and Use that one instead. Uh, and the, we need to change how this is going below. So we have our weapon inventory. You can keep that, these two. But from that, we're going to drag and do a get. 
So we need to get this item. Uh, and then we need to right click and split struct pins. And you'll see here the item index. You need to put that under get. And then have the get go up to that new weapon inventory. And what we can do is drag this up and disconnect these. Let's keep it there for reference. So you remember that you actually made a change here. Drag this one down. And it should resemble this. Go ahead and compile. And then save that. So that brings you to the 1.8 version of Survival Game Kit. Remember, this is just for Survival Game Kit, not the merged version. In the, the level, go ahead and go to where it says Survival Game Kit and then 1.7.4. Select it and choose, and so type that as 1.8. We will save it and this will help you when you come in the future. Remember what version you're on. So you should always keep that current, whatever patch you have applied. So hopefully this has helped you. Uh, if you found this helpful, make sure you make a comment below, like, and subscribe this video. Um, if you want to help us out and uh, jo talk with other people that are have doing similar things as you that have similar interests, make sure you join our Discord server because that's a great place so you can go and ask questions, help people with, other, with answers of things that maybe you've done before, and there's a lot of good resources in there. If you want to help support future videos, make sure you go and check out the Patreon channel. That'll be in the, uh, the list, the text down below as well in the description. And, uh, and just make sure you watch for these videos. If you like, uh, like what we do, make sure you can join this community and continue supporting the efforts that we put forward and make sure you let the developers know, for instance, survival game kit, very good, uh, piece of software. Let them know that you appreciate it because he puts a lot of work. He puts a lot of updates, uh, that I'm doing. I'm not doing all this work of actually figuring out all these fixes. Diffuse studios is doing that. Uh, and they do a very good job of it and put out regular updates. So thank you for making it through to the end of the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one and hope you have a good night.